All right, so as I mentioned on Facebook, I am shooting my brother's wedding this weekend and uh, promised a quick look in our bags because um, when I do shoot weddings, I shoot them with another photographer. Um, I'm actually more of her assistant. She is the lead. We're going to go through my bag first. Uh, really not too exciting. You've seen most of this before. Uh, I use a 5D Mark III. I'm currently trying, I'm renting the Sigma 35 F1.4. I will be using that some tomorrow on a rapid strap. I love my rapid strap. Um, the other lens that I'll be using very often tomorrow is the 24 to 70 Mark II. Uh, just so sharp. Really, really lovely lens. Um, and if this was a bigger, this is a very small wedding and I'm going to be part of the wedding group. Uh, so I'm not going to be using a 70 to 200. If this was a bigger wedding, I would be. We would rent a 70 to 200 for me. Christina owns one. I don't. Uh, it's a little bit out of my budget right now and the renting is working well for us. And nothing else in here that's really going to get used at the wedding. We occasionally pull out the LED light panel. I've shown this before. I have this in videos. Um, it is quite nice. It's nice to add some light to ring shots, but you can also do some other cool stuff with it. We don't use it consistently, but we have used it on occasion. And it, of course, comes with this little wallet of two different inserts for matching your color balance. And um, then a card wallet. We have our CF cards in here. Face up means that they are formatted and ready to be used. When it is done, it goes back in face down like this. I'll show you the bag that I use during the wedding. This bag I don't use. This bag gets all of the gear there. This is my um, older version of a Think Tank Airport Antidote version 2. Um, I use a lens exchanger bag, and I'll show you that in just a second. And this gets... Uh, I'm going to call it wired, but it, doesn't. it gets basically tied to that bag. Uh, and so there's no way that it can be dropped or lost and it keeps locked up. And I really like that because, holy schmoly, you're shooting somebody's wedding. You've taken, you know, 16 gigabytes worth of photos and you want to make sure when that card comes out that absolutely nothing is going to happen to it. We've got polarizer filters in here, an intervalometer and things of that sort. We might do a fun time lapse for this wedding tomorrow, but um, in your normal weddings, not too often. I'm going to throw that down there and pick up Christina's bag. Big bag. This is a Think Tank Airport International. It is a roller bag. It rolls so, so very smoothly. Think Tank, I mean, they're expensive. They're not cheap, but they make fantastic fantastic gear. So let me open this up and show you what she will be shooting with. She has a red card wallet. It's the exact same type except it's a different color so that's how we keep them straight. It does fit both CF and SD cards underneath so we keep those underneath. With the 5D Mark III you can shoot to both uh, compact flash and SD at the same time and we do. Um, as both kind of a backup and uh, sometimes for slideshows. Then now we've been traveling with this, oh, lots of in loops, lots of charged in loops, little stickers on them that let you know which way um, they're facing if they're full or empty so you can keep track at a glance. And we just made those and printed them off. We saw them with somebody else. So first off, because we're traveling um, and away for more than a few days, we brought this, we're shooting both the reception, uh, sorry, the rehearsal dinner and the wedding. Uh, so this is a wonderful way to get all of your in loops charged up very quickly. I will put links of this stuff up soon. As I said, uh, 70 to 200 F2.8 IS, fantastic lens. Again, so sharp, it should be, you pay a lot of money for this. Um, you know, I know a lot of budget folks use, and I've tried too, the 70 to 300. Uh, indoors that can get really tricky to use because you, use a, you lose a lot of light when you're zooming that out at the end at 5.6 and this you can be at 200 and still be at f 2.8 which is quite fantastic a wonderful amount of light lots of flashes uh, a 580 ex2 and then these are the 600s these are wonderful they have the radios built in 580s are optical slave only unless you buy something like the alien bees or the um, the poppers and the 600s have radios built in they can communicate to each other and how we use why we have so many is one is on the camera and my other tips remember before i've talked about you point it backwards and angled to do that bounce flash um, but during the dance and actually um, during the dance dancing uh, reception 
we will often put, each of us will have a second 600 on a light stand on the other side of the dance floor from where we are mostly shooting. And we will use that, we will uh, dial it down manual, very low level, and that adds just a pop of flash that kind of outlines people, it's rim lighting makes a huge difference, really sets them apart from the background, really takes the kind of those dance pictures to the next level. It's very nice. So we have four of these. And the other thing that they get used is multiple ones can be put into um, an umbrella setup for portrait pictures if we need to get a little external, a little uh, external light on folks. And you can use three, four of them all at the same time and that works quite nicely. Spare card reader with just some spare cards but we should be fine. Um, on Christina's 5D Mark II, she has a 35, the Canon 3514. We're testing out the Sigma though. We've heard a lot of wonderful things about it. And um, if it's as sharp as they say, and if it works well for her, we'll probably try to sell this Canon and go ahead and buy the Sigma. It'll save us a little bit of money. And then probably she's not here at the moment, but if she had to pick a favorite lens, I'm pretty sure she would say that it is the 85-1.2. So on her 5D Mark III with a battery grip, two batteries in there, she shoots a ton of photos with the 85 uh, F1.2. It's, I mean, it's a wonderful lens. And you, you certainly do sacrifice some convenience when you're shooting with primes, but for Christina, that works. She, um, she feels the trade-off is more than adequate. Uh, for the images that she gets out of there, being able to shoot. They're just so sharp, being able to shoot, not necessarily at one, two, but because you're razor sharp. And you know, most of these lenses, even as expensive as they are, don't perform perfectly wide open, but you stop down from that just a little bit, one, four, one, eight, and you can get some amazing, amazing images. Some various lens hoods, these are actually pop on to the top of the 600s and you can put gels in there. We do often use gels to kind of balance the color again when the flash is going off. Uh, 51 4, we don't use it too often, um, but it does come along with us and there are times where it gets used. That's just power cord for that. And that's just actually power cord for an iPad or her phone. Spare batteries. We, um, you know, these batteries do last quite a bit. Uh, but let's see, how many do we have? She's got two in her 5D Mark III, one in her 5D, and then I have two. So I think we have, what did that equal total? Five, and then we have one extra spare, six. So we have six batteries. And, um, you know, they last through a longish wedding often. Really longer weddings, I do find myself changing batteries. Um, but, you know, that's one of the things about these nice, chunkier batteries. They do last. So I think that's a pretty thorough look at basically what we use. As I said, um, if this wasn't my brother's wedding and I wasn't going to be in the wedding party and very close, I would also have a 70 to 200. But otherwise, this covers it. Uh, you know, huge, obviously expensive lenses, but a lot of money spent on flashes because, as I said in that quick tip the other day, light, 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 and controlling light and being able to control light really makes a huge difference in the way you're uh, images look. Holy moly, I forgot that I said I was going to show the lens exchanger bags too. Sorry, I almost uh, packed up and need to get going here because stuff is happening. So this is another Think Tank bag. This is called the lens exchanger. And as I mentioned, the uh, card wallet that is super important gets wired in or tied in right here. And um, this has just enough room for three lenses at a time, for a lens and a flash, or two lenses and a flash. It closes, and it does Velcro close, but very smartly. They have these kind of stealth flaps that, uh, the airplane's going over. Um, when they're up, you can very quietly open and close this. And on the other side is spot for spare batteries. And it sits very snug against your hip. Um, and it has a nice beefy strap, um, all metal construction uh, for the buckles, uh, and um, just really comfortable. And so basically you're wearing this for sometimes six, eight hours a day, and it's very nice. We actually have two, Christina has one and I have one, and I've got a little bit of orange on there to let me know which one is mine. So that was the Think Tank lens, or actually it's called the Retrospective LC3. And now, so if you have any questions about anything you saw here, um, certainly leave a comment down below or find me over on Facebook. And 
you know, I will have some wedding tips uh, soon. It's, it's a big discussion, and when, when people ask for wedding tips, I'm not sure, are they asking as friends of the family, just taking some fun pictures, or are they talking about they want to start booking weddings and take some pictures? I will say for the first one, um, if you're friends of the family and you just want some nice pictures at it, the first tip, and it sounds kind of harsh, is stay away, sorry, not stay away, stay out of the way of the professional photographer. Um, you know, introduce yourself, be very friendly, but certainly let them do their job. There is nothing more frustrating than trying to get nice pictures and having Uncle Bob just kind of rise up in front of you all of a sudden. Uh, in, in a nice way, the way we often handle that is say, all right, give us, you know, with these portrait pictures we're about to take, give us four or five minutes, let us get the pictures, and then, then have the group stand there for just a few more minutes longer so that other people can get in and get their pictures. Let them know that there'll be an opportunity for them to take their pictures as well. You don't want to just shut them down because that's rude, um, and you're certainly not there to be uh, rude, but you're also there to do a job, and your job is to get the best pictures you can of the bride and groom and their family. So, I think that's all I want to say. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't, please subscribe. Thank you.